Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend of the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, everybody. This is Guest Thursday, and uh, we have very special guest. Uh, uh, Thor and uh, Jenny uh, are, uh, are great friends of ours from Iceland, and uh, you guys are sitting in Iceland right now we see behind you it's kind of dark is it uh, <laughs> is it already uh, where you're starting to enter where it's dark most of the time <laughs> yeah it's getting close to that yes <laughs> we're yeah. heading into that we're about to get here as, as it flows, get closer to Christmas then yep the darkness come over like four hours of daylight maybe yep oh is that it wow yeah we were we visited (laughs) them we visited them in june and uh then it was sun all the time (laughs) that's that's when you get the fun side of it right (laughs) it still was kind of chilly (laughs) it was was 50 what's the uh, what is the temperature uh as you go into winter what is the temperature uh range from what's typical day and night Uh, so fahrenheit so day and night this like we we Maybe average is say, I don't know, 10, 15, Fahrenheit, 15, 10. Well, it's, I mean, really cold, but I would say, I mean, 20s. Um, I guess we've had some 30s right now too, yeah. but yeah, it's that. But like I always tell people when they ask me how cold Iceland is, I say that the coldest I've ever been in my life is Chicago. Yes. Ah. <laughs> to Chicago in January was, I, I have not hit that level of coldness even here. <laughs> I can, uh, I can verify that because we grew up in Chicago. So <laughs> yeah, that's, funny. that's why we live in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we're, lo- we're just excited to have uh, Thor and Jenny uh, join us. They uh, are learning. They've learned how to abide. Uh, they are associated with uh, Keith and Rebecca, uh, Cardi uh, that are in uh, Iceland and of course they live in Denver and Iceland is both but Heath and, and Rebecca uh, you know have been there they met uh, Jen and Thor and then together uh, they are working now toward multiplying giving it away Kathy uh, oh, in, uh, so in cool. Iceland and I believe uh, spiritually actually there's an eruption you know that potentially could happen but I, I believe that it's it's uh, what God is doing is an eruption of the of the spirit so it's going to be fun that you guys get to be part of that and and we get to assist that so we'd like to start with uh, having you uh, share with the audience a little bit of your history so uh, if each of you will uh, uh, Jenny why don't you start how did you come to know Christ well I have known Christ since I was a child at, at an early age and um, to tell that story is kind of telling like what was going on in my family during that time my parents were separated and so my mother had me and my brother, I have two other siblings after that, but we lived in kind of the DC, Maryland, um, Washington, oh, yeah. a, that area, yeah. We have family um, out there. Yeah, so I mean, I love, very nostalgic for me because in those seasons, it was really difficult for my mom, very, very hard, but she just clung to the Lord. And so um, even sometimes not having money for you know rent or food, but I remember this box arriving, she ordered a box from CBN. And it had um, VHS tapes of Superbook, and it had like a ch- uh, this illustrated children's Bible, and wow. so just kind of her making sure that we were in the church and that we were there. And I remember writing in the back of that Bible, I had a part where it says, "Do you want to be friends with Jesus?" And I said, "Yes, I want to be friends with Jesus." <laughs> and so I love I, it. it was just, I mean, it was a really simple just decision, but yet that faith grew. And even for my mom, when I would do something that would be in need, I'll be in need of discipline. Um, (laughs) You know, I rarely, um, you know, felt the rod, you know, for me personally, but because she would say, Jenny, do you think Jesus is happy with that decision? And I would just melt and I would just be like, no, and all that. So so then when we moved, um, my parents- So so Jenny, so Jenny, did that happen, what, about every other day or what? (laughs) (laughs) Now, all of a sudden, (laughs) 
<laughs> I really, I, mean, I guess being the oldest too, that rule follower and all that, <laughs> thing, you know, and words are always big for me. So yeah, so I don't know, you know, maybe uh, yeah. uh, two times a month, you know, yeah. who knows. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so my parents reconciled briefly for a season. We moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, and at that church um, there um, is where I got baptized. I think it's always fuzzy. I feel like I was, I think I was seven years old. So six really when I met Jesus and then um, seven. And so it was just really just, um, and publicly too, at a service, raising my hand. So that progressive wow. progression of, of those of those things was my faith journey. And then mm -hmm. just continued from there. And for me, be, I don't know if this is um, right to say, but being discipled through my mom's life, because I was seeing not just like, we do this on Sundays and it's just whatever during the week. I mean, my mom was going through so much, but like Naomi, she just clung to the Lord. And so I was seeing the Jesus that's rock, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus that's our friend, Jesus where we don't have anything, anyone else but you. And so seeing that, it just, my faith just really got solidified. Um, and so I'm just very grateful for that. Great. And did you, I love uh, that. did you, uh, uh, before you, you know, went into high school and college, did you move to Alabama then or was your family yeah. move afterwards? Yeah, I was I was actually born in Huntsville, Alabama, but then my parents separated. Um, it's just really long the story, even with us going to Nigeria for a little bit, and then some issues there. So then we ended up moving with other Nigerian friends. My parents are Nigerian in that Washington D.C. area, and then um, then we moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. Then back when I was 11 years old, back to Alabama. Okay. So I was actually born there, and then majority raised there, but there was the, the pockets of times where we were other places. Okay, and did you go to, uh, you went to high school there, did you, where did you wind up then going on to school after that? I went to high school at Bob Jones in Madison's like a suburb of Huntsville, and then I went to University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Ah. So, ah. of all, so that's all where. Right. And when we were in Knoxville for that period of time, my dad was actually working on his PhD there. So we were, familiar with the area. And um, I actually didn't want to go to school right away. I wanted to do, there was a kind of a ministry training program. I don't know how much it's still around called Master's Commission. I wanted to do that for a year. Um, but, you know, if you talk to other like children of Nigerians, they know you're either going to be a lock, doctor, lawyer, or engineer. There's no <laughs> anything else. Right? And so, um, uh, so my parents were just like, what are you doing? And like, almost like you're rebelling. And I was this, you know, I'm really a good kid, you know, and all that. And so I struggled. But so finally they were like, well, you haven't even applied for anything. And I was like, well, I did apply for UT. And they're like, but what about, I mean, how are we gonna pay for this? I'm like, well, I have a letter that says I have a in-state like scholarship. And then they're gonna waive the out-of-state fee because of, I got into the honors program. They're like, what? I mean, I, I was so <laughs> just on my thought process of doing a ministry. So they're like, Jenny, like, you know, um, answer it. You're gonna, this is what you're gonna do. So, and so I did, I'm grateful, I am grateful. Yeah. I studied social work there and then moved back to Alabama and got my master's in social work. Yeah, great. But then didn't really use it in an agency, just went right into ministry, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, Thor, um, how about you? Um, how, how did you come to know Christ? And, uh, you know, where did you grow up? My story is a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I grew up actually in the town we're living in right now, in Eiderbakke in Iceland. And there's a small uh, fishing village here in Iceland. I grew up here and um, uh, I was a, a, a troubled kid in a lot of ways. I failed first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, just name it. Uh, I don't have really no education, uh, but um, as our life goes on, I came to be a, a bartender in Reykjavik and, and around 24, life was not going the direction I needed to be going and I just needed to get away. And I had a friend um, that his name is Sai. He used to live in my hometown. We were best friends and he had already moved uh, to U.S. to Huntsville, Alabama mm. and I, on scholarship to play basketball. And uh, so I called him up one day and said, hey, can I come over and just relax? And uh, I got enough money to stay three months and just gonna come over. So I did that. I uh, flew over there in January uh, in 2002. And I remember when I came in at the airport, he already gave his life to Jesus himself. Mm. Now he was already a believer then. And the first thing I said to him, I don't need nothing, it's Jesus crap you got. So just leave me alone. <laughs> I don't need nothing of it, just leave me alone. 
And uh, <laughs> actually, so as that time goes on, it was on Thursday, uh, 2002, March 14, and uh, around noontime, I walked to my friend and asked him, so this Jesus thing for real? And he looks at me and said, you know, thing is, it doesn't matter, you don't listen to me anyway, so don't, you, you just need to go into your room and pray and check it out. If he is real, he is real. If he's not, he's not. And I said, what the heck? I can do that. <laughs> and I, I went to the room and, you know, I seen, you know, kind of Iceland is kind of, yeah. Anyway, so. You've seen prayer. I've right? seen prayer before. So I know that, okay, I can go on my knees and I can pray. I can talk and says, I went in and checked it out. Walked back out and said, I told you so. This Jesus thing is not real. He don't answer nothing. He said, okay, no problem. And uh, and by that night, he's a, he was a leader of FCA, a Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Oh, and, excellent. And uh, so he was a leader. So I was a good friend. I went with him in all those places. And and I remember, so we I went with him that, that Thursday night. And uh, that night, it was a packed house. and never been packed house before. And uh, this guy named Elba Malone, he was telling his testimony. And he was a drug addict and how the Lord just touched him one day. And he just got radical healed. And so he was just telling his testimony, and it was normally from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. And uh, so that night, he spoke, told his testimony, 9.50 or so, he was done. And uh, he stopped before he went all the way down. He asked the guys, can I keep going? I just feel like I need to keep going. And they said, just keep going. Just go ahead. And uh, he said, this is the altar. And he just, just stopped preaching. I have never, never seen nothing like it. And uh, he just started preaching. And the uh, first thing he said, hey, there is this guy that needs to be healed right now. he got a broad problem. And I look back, there's a double door in the back. And this guy just opened his double door and walks in, never been there before. And he raises his hand. That's me. He comes forward. He put his hands on him. He falls on the ground. And I said, what is going on over here? <laughs> and then just out of that, I see these people start laughing, start crying. And all this going on, I'm sitting out there in front. I'm sweating like a pig, even though pig doesn't sweat, <laughs> but it's dripping down. And I'm sitting, and I just can see my, you know, just like my heart is on 250, like I'm sprinting. So at 1135 that, that night, he walks at me and said, are you ready now? Has he not proven himself to be real? Wow. And I looked at him and said, yes. And so because my friend he went to Church of Christ, I don't know if you're familiar with that in the South. So I need to get baptized right away. And uh, so at two o'clock in the morning, they baptized me. <laughs> so, Because apparently there was a men's group as well that had been pr were praying for him as well mm -hmm. um, during that time. So like um, as soon as his friend called, I mean, they were ready to go and yeah. So this is really, really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, Thor, I don't know if you, I'm sure you don't know this. My daughter-in-law is actually on staff with Fellowship of Christian Athletes in the oh. Boston area in Danvers. Oh. Um, and my, my husband actually became a Christian through FCA as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Not and quite my, the same story you have, but yeah. still a good story. And Michelle, uh, Michelle was the president of FCA at uh, uh, Colorado State University when she was there for two years. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So that was a great, great ministry, beautiful. And how old were you yeah, then? Cool. I was 24. 24. I was okay. 24. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, so Jenny's a believer. You're a believer. How did you guys meet and then decide to get married? <clears throat> oh, good question. <laughs> well, I, was in, I was in school at Tennessee, and when I would visit back and forth, because during that time, you know, his church, they were going through a lot of change. They were. It's Church of Christ, and they don't necessarily, at least, you know. So they don't believe in instruments or, right. uh, you know, and all that or like stuff. the Holy Spirit. So they were kind of beginning. People were really beginning to seek out more. And so the college age students were visiting my home church. So I would like, you know, visit and we would be at the college ministry, and I would see different people there. And then, and he was there. But I mean, it was just kind of like, oh, there's this. They're like, oh, this dude from Iceland. I'm like, okay, didn't think anything of it. Back at college. So when I graduated in 2005. Um, I think, and I ended up working on staff. So I got hired on staff at our church. So I remember after a while, 2006 maybe, I would see you like walking I was walking my office by door. the office. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful woman right there. I need to talk to that woman. <laughs> so I, I, was, I was brave and I asked her out for a date. Uh, I didn't get a night in a lunch, you know, dinner date. I got a lunch date. And uh, <laughs> about 10 minutes before the lunch date, she calls me and said, all the staff is going to the certain restaurant. Let's go there. 
So I don't know what kind of date that is, but <laughs> a very safe date yeah. is what that yeah. is. And I, because typically <laughs> said, I was like, I mean, because I was, you know, our youth department was all in the same office area. I was like, you're going and you're going. And my friend was a oh. master's assistant. I'm like, you're going. You know? <laughs> I guess it was obviously C told everybody to come anyway. Now, Thor, Thor, you had, uh, <laughs> so you had, we need to go there. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Thor, you, Thor, you had decided to stay in Alabama for a while then? Yeah. So when I, after I gave my life to Jesus, I got the opportunity to be assistant basketball coach at UEA, ah, University okay. of Alabama. And that's a credible story because the only way for me to be assistant coach, I had to go to school and the Lord opened a radical way for me to get into university with no education and, you know, <laughs> and wow. all the, so, so, so yeah. So, so you're a, uh, so you're a good basketball player then? I mean, I'm a decent basketball player. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. So you're. He plays basketball. So yeah, he plays basketball with the guys um, here in the town and he'll come back at night like. I'm the oldest one there, and I, yeah, I'm feeling it, you know. <laughs> so you're you're a basketball coach, and uh, you're uh, asking her out on a date. So how how did it go from there? Well, we we went on a date, and uh, so date or not a date. So anyway, so when they brought the bills, I was not going to pay for this date because this was not a date. It was kind of awkward, with, awkward date. So, yeah, but anyway, people. twelve people. So the bill was so the bill. You know, they separated the bill, so her bill was close to me. I just put my hand on it, and I was going to push it to her. <laughs> I was going to pay for but it. I thought he was taking the bill to pay for it, and I, for me too, I was like, it's not a date. So I, I slammed my hand on the table and go, no, like that. No? <laughs> and um, needless to say, it was like, okay, this is awkward. And I think really honestly from there, we didn't really see each other too much for like three years. For almost three years wow. after wow. that. And yeah, so it was like, I mean, and I got more involved, you know, in our ministry, he was involved in, in the neighborhood, but, and you know, a lot of different things between there, but then fast forward, basically, um, our friend who was a youth pastor then, and now, um, is a pastor of the church. He came to me, he went to go visit this outreach place and he comes back to my office and says, Jenny, I know who you're going to marry, but I'm not going to tell you who it is because every time we give you maybe a suggestion for a guy, you put your wallet <laughs> up. So you go home and pray about it and see what God has to say. I'm like, and I was so offended, like what, you know, but because the thing is too, I had never dated either. So like I had standards, but also was kind of like, always kind of like, I don't know and, and all that. And so I went home and all these different guys that I had liked, you know, or I thought maybe had been interested, went through my head and he was the last one. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> because, <laughs> because I was like, I was so rude to him. And then, you know, just, you know, other things involved there. So I thought, oh no, Lord. But that was, I think that was probably April. I don't know, or, or March. So, but I just continued to pray and continued to pray and God continued to soften my heart. And so finally no. at our church staff prayer in May, so I should be praying about church stuff, but I was praying about this. <laughs> it was almost like God was convicting me hmm. and I just felt like I need to send him a message. So I sent him a message and... And I was very clever. I sent her a message back and with a question. So they keep things going. <laughs> keep, so ah, keep well clear. done, well done. So we, um, yeah, so that was May. So, we had a date in June. Yeah. And, and, and then... We, we start dating in August. Like officially, I, yeah, August. I asked her to marry me in November and we got uh, married August 2010. Yeah. Yeah. And even in the yeah, midst later. of that, there was some, cause again, cause I had never dated. And so I, after a while I started to panic, like, Oh God, is this, this is for real. This is really happening. Almost like you're going up a roller coaster and you're like, can I get off? Can I get off? And all that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the Lord, the Lord used dreams to confirm to me. It was, I mean, there was a lot more that year. I mean, there were things I was That's writing so down. Fun. It was even like one thing, um, you know, I was helping with the women's conference and I had, created a, a devotional for the women's conference of just different verses each day that the women would read. And my verse for the beginning of that year that I had put in, you know, maybe six months before then was he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I already knew I was like, God, you're promising me something this year. I just, I just felt the life on that. And so, but anyway, but so during that process, God gave me dreams. And so certain things that I had prayed for written in my journal, like God literally sh like confirmed it in a dream and, and almost like was like, Hey, it's okay, like had peace, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Even my mom praying too was like, okay, who's this guy from Iceland? Who's this guy? person? But the Lord spoke to her as well that, you know, this is a kinsman redeemer. This is like a Boaz. This is that type of person. So even for wow. her, my mom, 
to praying. And so that was really um, just a beautiful thing to see unfold that God was like, yes. And so, you know, I almost like God arranged my marriage in a way and just confirming it. And like, just as a father saying, Jenny, this is, this is okay. This is safe. And this is a, mm -hmm. this is a good man. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. So you That's got married, so you got married in uh, 210. And um, yeah. how did you then uh, decide to move back to when and, and how did you move back to Iceland? So, uh, that's a, you know, so, so we, we work in the ministry and uh, so it probably started in 2014, 15, when, uh, when I was in, you know, the, the whole thing started then. It was, in, it was in January. I went to Hong Kong for a mission trip and uh, what happened there, uh, I got a phone call as I landed there uh, that my, my daughter, our uh, firstborn was so sick, the ambulance was at the house picking her up. She had a seizure. She had a seizure. Mm. And uh, I was kind of just, okay, what do I do? Uh, and do I need to go back right away? But I felt the Lord saying, no, I love your wife and your daughter way more than you do. I just need mm. you to obey me mm. uh, and follow. And that was a kind of beginning of uh, dreams that I got about Iceland. And that it was, I got a dream that I was coming to a place um, it was a room with bonus, it was a, with the whole ice, and uh, as I walk in, I see people under the ice, and I start beating the ice. And mm -hmm. uh, eventually, I was able to reach a person. I brought him up and I say, and ask the Lord, will he live? And he said, put it back up, down, and then slowly up and down, I took the person out. So I wrestled with that dream. But in 2015, when, when the Lord tells me that, that you know he loves, I just to obey him. So when I come back. I'm working with the ministry in Huntsville. The, uh, I feel the Lord uh, kind of leading me to the release the ministry. And release the, yeah, yeah, release yeah, that, yeah. Release the ministry. So I go to my friend and I release the ministry. It's no problem. My salary is coming from other churches anyway, so it doesn't hit my salary. But the next morning I feel the Lord say, no, I told you to release it. And that was also my salary. So I went back <laughs> to the ministry. You and said, I, you said, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> like, <"All right>, hello. <laughs> hello. So I looked at my wife and I say, I, that's what I feel like she's saying. So, you know, I want to be obedient if this is the Lord. And, and she agreed. So we were in unity about it. So, and actually I went to my, uh, my, my guy that kind of discipled me um, and I told him about it. And he said, what are you doing? You got a third kid on the way. You can't do that. And uh, let's go talk to you guys and just let's ask them 100 questions. Uh, okay, we're gonna do the next day. Five o'clock in the morning, my phone doesn't stop. It's my friend and he's calling me and he's calling me and said, hey, I have not been able to sleep the whole night. You better do what the Lord is telling you to do. Mm. So he didn't have peace. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so we went in and that happened and gave up a salary. But I thought the Lord, as he did that, I thought, okay, now, you know, we walked out of the office, the peace of the Holy Spirit came, like I spoke English better than I ever spoke before. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so we went to the elevator, me and my friend, we had a total high five, he looked at me, I know the Holy Spirit is going to do something amazing with you, and everything, okay, but nothing happened. Three years later, it's like, what's going on? I mm -hmm. thought it would be right away. And uh, so, then we start getting like a lot of like we, are, we are in different places and we get different prophecy words i'm still pondering that dream i got okay what is this dream what are you saying and uh so we got a bunch of a, like a word coming and then and, and people start talking about iceland so in 2016 we came to iceland and i felt the lord kind of saying you know, just to visit family to visit family my family lives here so i'm from iceland mm -hmm. so and I feel the Lord saying, hey, I want you to love this nation and then love it and then love it. When you get tired of loving it, I want to love it deeper. So what does mm -hmm. that mean? And uh, so as that goes on, I decided let's, for 2017, I'm going to try to co take a few trips to Iceland and just see if this is some calling happening here or is it just me just trying to bring something up because I'm waiting on something to happen. And uh so, but I meet with a guy that's a missionary here in Iceland from the U.S. And I ask him this question, you know, what do you know, you are, you know, when you are called or be a missionary? And he looks at me and says, you have to recognize two things. You have to recognize, is this a burden or calling? 
and is there's a difference between burden and calling. Yeah. If you burn, have a burden for something, maybe you're just supposed to give a money or come once every two, you know, every two or three times a year and yeah. motivate us and speak live into us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you're cold, you get to tell over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was the process. And and then next and then, day, and then for because for me I was in my walls up. I was like I'm not moving to Iceland. I'm yeah, like, that's great. But I do. I mean I would <laughs> then engage in that conversation. But um, God bless how He speaks. You know through so many different um, ways and what He confirms with His Word and all that. But I had a friend who you know came to me. I was at a worship service. Um, we were at her house and we were just having worship and singing. And I know in prayer I just felt like the, the Lord came to me almost like a lion and was started to roar over me is what I was feeling. And then he was saying, Jenny, I'm roaring away all the lies that you have believed. Um, mm-hmm. And so after we, at the end of the night, she comes to me and says, hey, Jenny, I have something for you. I feel, I feel like from the Lord. And so um, she says, I feel like the Lord wants to remove your lies and the lies you've been believing, not just about you know things around you, but even about your husband. And that there are certain things that God is leading him to do. Now, we had not been vocalizing Iceland to really anybody, except for the people who were coming to him and saying, like, hey, you know. Um, but she said, I, whatever he has to do now is up to you. She said, I see your hands like a vice around his neck. Whatever he, however he moves forward is up to you now. So, and that just, I mean, hit me because I was, there wow. were so many things that I was believing, so many things that were kind of coming up from my past with my family and all of that. And so I was just in the state of like this, of like, I'm not moving and trying to control and all that. And so that was my first, um, kind of with an abiding, and we talk about neutral. That really was my first, like of learning to be neutral of like, God, I don't know what this is. I don't want to move, but I'm going to put my hands like this. Like, yeah. so that you can take out whatever you need to take out, put in whatever you need to put in. And I don't want my hands to be a vice around my husband's head, <laughs> you know, in the spirit. Um, you know, but so from there, the, I mean, when I tell you, like, it got to a point where I was like, God, I don't need not one more confirmation. Thank you. Because it was everywhere over and over going to like a conference and just going up for prayer and a, a, a woman stopping and saying like, I see like a geyser bursting between you guys almost what I can picture. And she's like, are y'all married? And we're like, yes. <laughs> and you know, we're not, we're, we didn't go and say like, Hey, we need to pray about Iceland. She just said that yeah. or uh, so many other mm-hmm. things. The tipping point was, you know, 2016, we'd seen, we'd been here visiting. And in the summertime, Iceland has a ton of, you saw them rich, these purple flowers, like yeah. these tall yes. purplish kind of flowers. Yeah. Lupina. Lupina. And so I saw those, I was like, oh, those are really cool. And so I, I really, they stuck with me. So that's 2016. 2017, we'd gone to a prayer meeting and a friend of mine, again, who did not know what we were praying about or what our hearts were pondering, she comes to us and says, you know, I just just had this picture of you guys while I was in prayer of just you guys standing in this field of these tall kind of purple blue flowers. And I said, hold on a minute, stop. And I looked wow. at the I pulled out my phone and Google. I said, is this what you're talking about? You know, she goes, oh, yeah, those are the flowers I see. And then so she continues to give us this word. I, honestly, I don't even remember the word because I was so overcome by the presence of the Lord. I'm just like, OK, OK, God, OK surrender like mm. i mean we had just moved into a new house like we had just all these different things and i was like that's it and i think within a few weeks we sat down with our senior pastors we're like you gotta go this is what this is what we feel so that really um the lord i'm so thankful for his patience because i think in that process too what he was was doing was trust because of just my past i told you guys how i grew up and so i'm like lord like you're going to send us to one of the most expensive countries in the world, right? I mean, and like, I mean, and where, like, you know, even this past year, struggles financially and just trying to, you know, all of that. And so it was just so beautiful just to see how God unfolded and continually reassuring and encountering us and speaking to us. And so um, it's just been been really cool just to see him do that. Yeah. As we, uh, uh, you know, move into, uh, we'll, we'll go to our next session, <clears throat> but, um, you know, you're highlighting a couple of things that, you know, Thor, you said that uh, you got to follow God's calling, not what you think is a good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the neat thing uh, that you shared, Jenny, is that uh, the Lord invites you by revealing things that mm-hmm. are his way to say, this is my will. <laughs> um, you know, keep understanding and, and see it. And it's not you figuring it out. You actually received it because he kept showing you. Yeah. Uh, so we mm-hmm. want to talk more about that next time and uh, particularly about uh, you know, I know once you got to Iceland, lots of wonderful things happened mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, learning to abide, but also to seek his will in a supernatural thing that he did 
to move you actually back to Thor's, which is, you know, I'm, I'm sure it blows your mind away that you're back hometown <laughs> mm. uh, in a spectacular way. So thank you so much for uh, sharing. Heavenly Father, we're just so excited uh, to learn of this story and how you worked and brought them together and then sent them uh, to Iceland. Uh, and it'll be a thrill to understand what happened there. And so we're just rejoicing with you and the joy that they have together uh, as a couple and as a family. And we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I loved hearing your story. I'm sure our listeners did too. It's such a beautiful story of listening and surrender, even, and just watching God take you on an adventure of a lifetime, it sounds like. So fantastic. Look forward to hearing more next week. And um, to our listeners, we look forward to End Times Friday tomorrow. We'll see you next time. Yep, we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.